all right so uh, let's start fine so i'll start with the concept of object oriented programming now fine what do you mean by object oriented programming for that let us look at simple examples and then go towards complex things i'll create a class right i'll create a class known as a very simple one say phone dot java okay now there is a f there are various features of a phone for example string um name of the phone okay or int price of the phone so these are two features of the phone class okay right suppose i create a new class known as user the user who is using the phone with the main function all right in java please note that only those files with uh, are executed which have the main function okay in your phone dot java i did not make any main function this is just a phone class representing a phone with name and price at properties okay this is a user class now what i'll do is that i'll create something known as object of the class over here of the class phone we create the object like this new phone this is how technically you create the object new the name of the class followed by the brackets and semicolon java is a case sensitive language p if i write p small it will give you an error the name should be exactly the same as the name of the class over here so i've created the object of the class phone in user.java now technically what does this mean what benefit does it give when you create an object technically in memory the space is allocated to the object phone right inside this phone object you have got name and price properties these two properties are already there inside the phone object all right fine okay i can create another object new phone again again what will happen is that inside the memory a new object will be created with name and price okay right but you cannot access these objects these objects will just be hanging in the memory okay to access the objects you need to have object references okay right so you need to have object references what do you mean by object references right uh you uh, what i mean is that if i write over here phone p1 equals to new phone and phone p2 equals to new phone p1 and p2 they are not objects they are references p1 will point say towards the first phone and p2 reference will point towards the second phone okay with p1 and p2 you can access the properties of the object i can write over here p1 dot name is nokia right p2 dot name is iphone so the property is same in the class the property is same the property is name okay right but this becomes a nokia and this becomes iphone all right similarly i can give say p1 dot price is 100 and p2 dot price is 500 something like this okay right so it is very important all right it is very essential and it is also always recommended that when you create the object you give the object references otherwise it's of no use you cannot use the objects okay now object is different object reference is different i can also write over here phone 
P3 equals to null. Well, what does null mean? Null means nothing. P3 is not pointing towards any object. That means this is this is the meaning. It's just again hang, hanging in the memory. It also doesn't mean anything. Okay, right. But you can make P3. You can write P3 equals to new phone. You can make P3 point towards a new phone object on the next line. Okay. Right. So this is important. At times people they get confused that what is happening. What do you mean by null over here? Okay. Right. You you can correlate now what I did earlier when I was in my first program dot Java or print name dot java i wrote over here new firefox driver firefox driver is a inbuilt class inside selenium i just created the object of that class and a blank browser opened up the magic was done by the jar files of selenium okay so i created the object of firefox driver over here fine okay now most of you would find whatever i am teaching to be very simple Okay, but be with me. I have to start it off like this because, you know, there are people from all the different backgrounds over here, right? I just cannot uh, start from the like the top, right? How to build a framework and how to automate, how to build test cases. Okay, you know, you, I have to go systematically. Fine. Now, anyways, moving forward. Object and object reference is different. Now this is these are very small concepts, but very important. Okay, when you make a hundred line program and an error comes up, and if you are not, you know, if you are not good at basics, you know, everything goes for a toss. Right? You will take one hour, two hours to solve a problem which could had been solved in just five minutes if you were clear with basics. Right? The concepts which I am telling you, these are also not clear to many developers. I've seen that. Okay, so that that's what. To be very honest, I'm being very honest with you. Like these are very simple concepts. Object and object reference. These are different. Okay, F like uh, we had three objects over here, right? I'll again draw. We have got three objects. Okay, having three references. P one. P2 and P3. Now objects they cannot move in the memory, but references they can move. By creating object and object references, I am giving the same variable name a different value. I can write P3 dot name is say um, any kind of phone say uh, Note. Okay, Samsung Note. Fine. So the first one over here among the objects it becomes hold on the name becomes Nokia iPhone and note okay right now object references they are not static in the memory they can move I can write over here P1 equals to P2 now this means point P1 where P2 was pointing. So what will happen is that inside memory P1 would be removed from here. It will start pointing where P2 was pointing. Okay. If I print over here system.out.println p1.name p2.name and p3.name and after pointing if I print the same thing okay and if I run this you can see in the output Nokia iPhone note and iPhone iPhone note is printed because this started pointing P1 started pointing where P2 was pointing P1 equals to P2 okay right fine and what will happen for the original object which is over here it's just Nokia is just hanging in the memory now nobody can access it soon it will be it then there's a concept in Java known as garbage collection right if an object is having no object reference that object is destroyed so this Nokia will be destroyed in the memory 
okay so this is the concept of object and object reference fine okay now moving ahead okay moving ahead inside the phone class i can also have a function say public void print name all right and this will just print the name okay whenever we create the object okay over here if i write p1 dot print name okay and p2 dot print name and p3 dot print name okay please note the fact that every object reference which is there in the memory okay every object reference which is there in the memory right will have a copy of all the global variables and functions inside it okay yes sri the question being asked is do you give the webex recordings after the class yes you will get it i record all the classes you will get the recordings for this class also you will get it the recordings you can access from this url hold on i'll give you the recording url qtpselenium.com <coughs> this is the url it will not work right now okay you can access it later on say 2 3 4 hours after the class okay right now <coughs> whenever you create an object of the class in the memory that object will have all these properties name price and print name whichever object calls the print name the name of that particular object would be printed okay so if p1 is calling print name name of p1 would be printed right so if you run this you again get the same output which you were getting earlier okay now technically these variables are known as non static variables this is known as a non static global variable it is not inside any function okay this is known as a non static global variable again if i declare a variable inside this function right this is a no local variable it is not non static static nothing it's simply a local variable you cannot access it with the object and all anything when you create the object okay you can access the non static global variables and you can access the non static function as well okay so every object you create every object has a copy of non static global variables and non static function inside it okay now there is also known as something known as static okay there is also something known as static uh for example if i create a variable int number of batteries okay now whenever you create the object of a phone you will assign that p1 has number of batteries as 1 okay p2 has number of batteries as 1 p all the phones have got one battery like no for there is no phone with four five batteries okay now this is not a good thing we know that the value is going to be same for all the objects then why to initialize it separately okay so we make this variable static okay so this is a static global variable now when you make something static okay what is non static non static is something which is there inside the object this is the object it it will have everything non static inside it okay every object you create it will have non static inside it but static is something okay 
which is you know which is common for all the objects over here it will be there okay the static things will be outside the objects but they will be common it will be common okay to access static stuff you don't have to create the object for to access non static i had to create object right i was writing phone p1 equals to new phone and then i was initializing the properties of p1 but for non static you can directly write that phone the class name dot the non static property number of batteries is 1 that's it to access static properties you can just access, you can initialize them with the name of the class that's it you got my point right okay. are you able to understand this concept the difference between static and non static right find any questions from anyone right now let's uh, move forward okay uh <coughs> uh just a minute user dot java yeah this is fine yeah so uh coming over to selenium okay i'll create a new class known as selenium basics all right now inside selenium you have a class for firefox known as firefox driver you write over here f equals to new firefox driver so you create the object of this class you will get an error okay you move your mouse over the error and import this class you have to import it from one of the jars which is inside this reference libraries right and when you run this program obviously it will open up a firefox browser okay when you run this program uh right click in this terminal you see that it is opening a browser right now if you write f dot you will see all the non static functions and variables associated with firefox driver it's huge it's vast okay now i'll tell you how to work on this how to understand the usage of each and every function and all you'll come to know okay J just be with me right one of the functions is get function f dot get the to a particular url you can mention the url that http yahoo.com so this will go to yahoo.com this is not like qtp in qtp you can miss out the protocol and write but in selenium you cannot do that you have to mention the protocol or otherwise selenium gives a uh, gives error you have to mention http or https whatever it is right and when you run this this will open up the browser and take you to yahoo okay you see that fine right now you can also read about this driver you can go to the official website of selenium go to the java documentation fine and you can look at the class these are all the classes which are there inside selenium all the inbuilt classes alphabetically arranged okay and you can look at the class firefox driver okay this is the firefox driver class fine it's got various functions and all we i'll tell you how to read this documentation right you you'll come to know everything fine now <coughs> going forward okay there is a class similarly for chrome as well all right for chrome you have a class known as chrome driver okay you create the object of chrome driver
right hold on import this and make sure chrome is installed on your machine and when you run this everyone will get this error illegal state exception the path to driver executable must be set by this property look when you work with chrome there is an exe file for chrome driver which you need to download from selenium website okay if you go to the website of selenium and if you go under the download link and if you scroll down there is this uh, chrome driver.exe this is the one which you can see over here you can click on this and you can go to the downloads link okay and over here uh, latest release is 2.14 you click on this and you'll be taken up to this page you can download for windows linux mac os anything right for windows even if you have 64 bit you download 32 bit it's not a problem right when you extract the zip file you will get an exe file like this chrome driver dot exe okay now in your code you need to write the command system system is an inbuilt class inside java okay system class dot you will get lot of static things inside it i told you right when you write the name of the class like we were doing it over here phone dot you were getting all the static things inside the class number of batteries i told right similarly when you write system dot you get a function known as set property set a system property okay in case of chrome you need to set the system property web driver dot chrome dot driver now it is case sensitive sometimes people keep w capital for this it will give you an error no you have to write everything in lower case webdriver dot chrome dot driver and the value should be the path of exe file for chrome that is f drive chrome driver dot exe okay in my pc it is lying at this location in java you have to give double slash in the paths this is the known as the concept of escape sequence right and whenever you write path in java you need to give double slash and now when you run this see the chrome opens right now there is a question being asked uh, first question is can the chrome driver be set once and every time every time when you are launching it you have to set this property okay and the second question being asked is why only this error is coming for chrome look chrome browser is developed by google okay there are few restrictions to it to automate it okay there can be some restrictions which selenium guys were facing when they were trying to automate chrome that's why they have this exe file which has to be used okay there can be some internal restrictions I am not aware of those restrictions okay right fine for all the third party drivers which are not by selenium hq.org you have these things for chrome for opera right so there are a lot of things lot of things See, even for I you have this not for Mozilla okay right and I'll just comment this now similarly for Internet Explorer okay if I write Internet Explorer driver okay I equals to new Internet Explorer driver okay and if I run this code it will again throw an error I will not open up like this okay again you have to set a system property for i system dot set property the way we did for chrome okay the property should be web driver dot i dot driver okay the path is actually you know inside selenium website you will have i driver server for 62 bit i or 34 bit i or 62 bit i 
you need to download the exe file for i again from here i already have it downloaded over here i drivers server dot exe okay so you need to give this in the path in the value i'll write f drive okay right now i'll open up I